Hi there everyone and welcome to Higher Biology. Uh, welcome especially to people who followed me from last year with the National 5 Biology videos. I really appreciate all your feedback on how you found the videos helpful and asking for Higher to be uploaded. Sorry that it's taken so long, uh, so let's get started with Unit 1 of Higher Biology, which is DNA and the Genome. So we're just going to start right at the beginning of Unit 1 with Kiria 1, which is the structure of DNA. And hopefully you remember from National 5 Biology, now, in terms of the structure of DNA, we have a double-stranded helix structure, which is held together by four bases, which were adenine, thymine, and cytosine and guanine. That is still true, but we're just going to go into a bit more detail in higher biology, uh, starting off with the nucleotide that you might remember. So, as you can see on the right-hand side, we've got those bases that we spoke about, and we'll go on to those in a minute. But what we're concentrating on is the full nucleotide in higher biology and what it's made up of. So as you can see on the left hand side, you have a phosphate molecule, and that joins onto a sugar molecule, specifically a deoxyribose sugar molecule. What that then does is connect onto a base, and together they form this nucleotide of DNA. Now, hopefully you can remember though, there's not just one nucleotide, the nucleotides are all joined together. And as you can see in this diagram, we've went into a bit more detail with the bases, you have adenine and thymine joined together there, and uh, the rest of them are also present in the middle. What you'll hopefully be able to notice here though, is in terms of that structure of DNA, so the double-stranded helix, you can see that the nucleotides on the left-hand side are flipped a different way from the ones on the right-hand side. Basically what's happening, although they both have uh, a sugar phosphate backbone on this nucleotide, they're swapped around, they run in opposite directions. And what we do is we call that an anti-parallel structure because they're running in opposite ways. Like the other side is flipped the other way around. And we'll go into more detail with that in a minute. <laughs> so in terms, like I said before, of National 5 Biology, we remember these bonds that are there, A, T, C, and G, or adenine and thymine and cytosine and guanine. They only join with each other and they can't be mixed up. What we want to go into a bit more detail, though, is what joins those bases together. So the complementary base pairs are held together by hydrogen bonds, but they're weak hydrogen bonds. They can be broken quite easily, and we're going to look at why that is more important uh, later on in Key Year 2. The other part I want to look at is this backbone that I've mentioned, so the phosphate and sugar molecules that are all joined together. Basically anything in the nucleotide that is not a base is part of this sugar phosphate backbone, and it just runs down sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate. They are held together by much stronger chemical bonds, called sugar phosphate bonds. So it's quite easy to remember that the bonds that hold sugar and phosphate molecules together are called sugar phosphate bonds. But they are the two types that you need to know in the structure of DNA. Going into a bit more detail though with this nucleotide, is that that deoxyribose sugar molecule contains five different carbon molecules, and we have them on this diagram here, running one to five. What's going to be quite important is if we look at the structure of DNA, if you look up at the top left of the diagram where the phosphate is joined, there's a 5 there, and at the bottom left there is a 3. Those parts are important, and they're the parts we're going to look at because that's where other uh, nucleotides join on, Okay, specifically at the 3 end. So basically, if you look at this diagram here, up at the top left you'll have a 5 carbon end, and we call that a 5 prime end. And at the bottom, you have a 3' prime end, okay, a 3 carbon. What's quite important here is that because we have that anti-parallel structure, it's on the other end, it starts off with the 3' prime end at the top right and the 5' prime end at the bottom right because they're flipped around. They're the same nucleotides, same bonds, uh, same carbons, but it's the opposite way around. So on the left-hand side here, we're running from 5' prime down to 3' prime. This will become uh, a bit more important in Kiria too, but what's really interesting is that at this 3' prime end at the bottom, that is the only area that new nucleotides can be added. If you look at the 5' prime end, that just ends in a phosphate. What we're interested in is the 3' prime end at the bottom of the sugar molecule. One way to try and remember them is that the 5' end having phosphates, they both have a sort of F sound, phosphate and 5. That could be one way to get it into your head. 
Also, what's important with new molecules being added onto the three prime end is that new has three letters in the word, so that might get into your head that that's the three prime end. So that's that anti-parallel anti structure that we're looking at in the structure of DNA. The next part we're going to look at, we're going to uh, zoom out a bit of the actual structure of DNA and look at the organisation of DNA. Now, cells are classified into two different types before you start thinking about plant cells and animal cells, bacterial cells, all this sort of thing. Widely referred to as either prokaryotes or eukaryotes. Now, prokaryotes do not have any membrane-bound organelles, such as a nucleus or all these other parts of the cell we've been looking at. What they do have, though, is they have a singular circular chromosome and they have smaller circular plasmids. So you should hopefully remember plasmids from when we looked at bacterial cells in National 5, Special Genetic Engineering. The circular chromosomes and circular plasmids are different, but they are both genetic information stored in a certain way. Prokaryotes can be thought of a more uh, simplistic, they're a more ancient form of cell. Whereas the second form, eukaryotes, are a bit different. They're a bit more complex. They have, or they possess, membrane-bound organelles, including a nucleus. And within that nucleus, they have linear chromosomes. But what they also have for genetic information within the cell is they also have circular chromosomes, and that's found in organelles such as the mitochondria and in chloroplasts. So two key differences between these here. First of all, prokaryotes do not have a nucleus, and eukaryotes do have a nucleus. You can even think as uh, pro prokaryotes. Pro is no in terms of no nucleus, and in eukaryotes, you do have a nucleus. Okay. One of the only things that might stump you though, if you're being asked to compare these, is yeast. Okay, so yeast is a special example of a fungal cell. Although fungal cells do have uh, your membrane-bound organelles and do have a nucleus. Yeast, or at least some forms of yeast, uh, do also contain plasmids. So, although on the whole uh, you can characterize a prokaryote as having a plasmid, it could also be a yeast cell, which is still a eukaryote. One of the final things to look at in this organization of DNA is this linear uh, DNA that we're talking about, these linear chromosomes. Basically, if you had a line of DNA and wrapped them all up and stretched them out, it would go on for miles. It would be absolutely huge. Obviously, a cell, and especially a nucleus, is so small, you need to be able to condense and package all of this DNA in order to fit into the nucleus. And how you do it is shown in this diagram here. Molecules of DNA are very, very tightly coiled, and they are packaged around these bundles of protein, which is called a histone. So these areas here that look like beads on a string, they are called histones, and you can be asked that quite a bit. So that's it for key area one. It's fairly simple. They're just going into a bit more detail in terms of the structure of DNA, especially your anti-parallel strands and how your five prime and three prime ends uh, work and how they run down the structure of a DNA molecule. In terms of organization of DNA, what it suggests is go through your old notes of uh, cell biology from National 5 and could classify what a bacterial, animal, plant and fungal cell would be in terms of either prokaryote or eukaryote. And we'll go into a bit more detail later on in terms of how DNA is organized there. So thank you very much for listening to this. Uh, like I said before, I really appreciate getting your feedback from the National 5 videos. Uh, there will be a lot of people asking for hire, so hopefully we can get the ball rolling here and I'll get more of these key areas up for you. I know you'll probably be quite far through the course just now, but hopefully you'll find this useful for revision. Thank you very much for listening and I'll come back with Kiria to the replication of DNA.